Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card that features a first look at the brand new Gerda Steiner Designs Clear Stamp Set. This stamp set will be released this on March 1st and it is a spring and Easter themed. There's not a lot of explicitly Easter stamps in it but just enough so that you could do your Easter cards and then plenty of other general spring stamps that would work well for a wide variety of cards and also would work well even past the spring as there's just some images of like butterflies and birds and flowers which you could use of course all year long. My idea for this card was to create a field of flowers with one special flower and mix it with this sentiment you're a rare find from a lawn fawn set. One of the cute things about the bunny rabbit from the set is he can be holding a flower he can be holding the dandelion, he could be holding the bubble blower stick, and I like that it opens you up to a lot of options, and you could even just leave his hand blank and just have him looking up at one of the other images, maybe something that is sitting in the tree branch or one of the butterflies flying about. As I stamp this scene, I'm using a panel cut with the Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle dies, and I'm stamping everything with black licorice hybrid ink from my favorite things because I will be Copic coloring the entire panel. There are a lot of great builder elements to this set as I've mentioned before but what I'm using right now are the grass and flowers. Like I said I want a whole field of flowers that are the same color and then one that's unique so I'm stamping down uh, some daffodils and I'll also be adding in some tulips and I'll be coloring all of them yellow and then have the bunny holding a unique pink flower and it will be the one with the five petals there. I'm going to mask off the bunny so that as I stamp the flowers around him I can make it look like he's more part of the scene and have some flowers in front of or behind him. For this I used Inka Dinka Doo stamping mask paper. I know that I'll be using the stamp set a lot so I decided to make a reusable mask. Of course you could use posted tape or typing paper with removable adhesive as I've mentioned in the past but like I said, I want to make sure that I can use this stamp multiple times and so I'd rather just have the mask and make it reusable. You'll see later on in the video that I store my masks by simply peeling them off and placing them on top of the image on the stamp set. I'm going to continue to carefully stamp down the tulips and the daffodils. I want the, the elements to look overlapping but without having to do masking so I'll stamp some of them in amongst the grass, some of them outside of the grass and then I'll be adding in some detail to the grass when I actually color with the Copic markers. I'm also sure to include some off of the page there towards the bottom so that it looks like this would be a larger field of flowers than you actually see and maybe he's standing on the edge of the flowers. Once I have finished stamping all of the flowers in the field, I'll remove the mask and I'm ready to complete my scene. Like you see there, I've placed the mask on top of my stamp set. When I go to stamp the flower in the bunny's hand, I realize that the leaf from the flower will overlap the bunny's face. And so I decide that I will remask the bunny, but I will cut off the arm part of the mask because I want the stem to appear as if it's in his hand but then the leaf not to block his face. Now I have most of my scenes stamped out but I was thinking that the area at the top of the card looked a little blank. This is going to be my sky. I want to use this little trio of hearts that are from the stamp set and also some butterflies. I really like that little trio of hearts stamp. I think that's going to be one of those ones that as I'm working with their stamps I will pull out again and again because it's those little touches that um, always fill in some space or add something extra to a card. There are two different butterflies facing in two different directions which again I think is well thought out because it allows you to create a scene if you wanted to direct the viewers attention to a particular path like for them to look left or right you can use the butterflies in that way so you see that all of my butterflies are facing in towards the bunny and the sentiment to make sure that that is the kind of the star of the show. As mentioned before I'm going to color all of the flowers in the field a yellow color and I'm taking two different colors of yellow I believe it's Y06 and Y08 but you could in fact even just use one color of yellow 
because there's not much room for shading in this instance. I'm going to color the grass and that's going to be a little bit tricky because I'll have to color all around the flowers, but I don't want to go through all the trouble of coloring around the leaves, so I decide ahead of time that I will make all of the leaves on the flowers a darker green and the grass a lighter green, so that way when I finish coloring the grass, I can just go back and add the leaf color in. For the blending of the grass, I decide to use the darker shadows where the actual stamped grass is and around the bunny because he's the main highlight image, but I'm not going to add shadows around all of the other flowers as that would be a little too tedious for the effect that I'm looking to achieve today. I know that this is going to take a long time to color the panel and so I kind of have to make some decisions about what is important for me to add or not add. I also used the darker marker, darker green marker to just add in some like flicks of grass just to give it a little bit more texture. To color in the sky, I'm using B02, 04, and 06, and I'm going to create the darkest part of the sky at the top and fade into a lighter sky. I found that because the paper that I use is the 110 pound Georgia Pacific cardstock that um, is commonly found at Walmart, but can also be purchased online, and I always leave a link to it, it is a thinner paper. And a lot of people recommend something thicker for Copics, and I don't generally find the need for something thicker and more expensive, but I think in this instance where I'm trying to color a large surface, it might have suited me better because the thinner paper absorbs the ink more quickly, and so I had to fuss around a lot till I got the most blending. And if you use a thicker paper, then the blending will take a little bit longer and you'll have a little bit more time to play. I've obviously speeded through a lot of the coloring because it would take a long time to color this image and I didn't think you wanted to see me coloring sky for several minutes. For the butterflies, again to keep it simple, I colored them completely with the lighter purple color which was a V06 and then added in the V09 darker color where I wanted the um, to add some highlights. For the bunny, I'm using E31 and 33. I'm going to do an overall wash of the 31, and then come back in with the darker colors. Sometimes I like to start with the darker colors and move on into the lighter colors, but in this instance I wanted to make sure that the images were blended well and I didn't get any streakiness since I'd had that trouble with the sky, and so I do find that, that they blend slightly better when you start with the lighter color as the base. When I'm happy with the way the bunny is blended, I'll actually be pretty much done with the card. I colored in the unique flower pink, the one that he is holding, and then I'm going to mount it onto a piece of um, white paper that I've colored with my Copic markers just to add a slight matte because this stitched panel is slightly smaller than a card base, and so I want to add one more layer in between. You see that I'm going in for some interesting shading there because, again, I really just want him to be the highlight of the card. So I took the RV09 marker, which I used to color the flower that the bunny is holding, so the unique part of it, and I used that as the border and the mat because I thought it would then bring more attention to that pink flower. And once I adhere that down, that will be it for my card today. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Gerda Steiner stamps and that you will be ready to... Um, check out her store on March 1st. I'll leave you links to her store and the products in the description below as well as the Gerda Steiner Designs Facebook group if you'd like to join us and share your projects. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, you can subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.